The previous lesson, we saw that we've got our progress bar running, but the problem is that the progress bar can run to zero and even less than zero. So that's not good. We need a way to end our game. So since we need a function that ends the game. So creating that function, and I know game over is always so sad, but of course we're gonna give the player the opportunity to start again if they want. So we've got our animation frame, so we want to cancel that animation frame. And that's that animation game that we've running. And remember again, this was set up within the start and this provided our loop. So we wanna stop the looping through of the animation frame. We also want to take our game over element. So the same one that we hid earlier and apply a style to it. And this time we want to show it. Cause what would be nice, we wanna let the player have an opportunity to play the game again. So we're going to drop that in and it's always a good thing to provide the player their score. So grabbing that span, we'll just use query selector all and grab the span and we're going to update the inner HTML of the span. You could have, you could take this in a separate object as well. So it depends on how much communication you want. So game over and this is HTML. So we can type in HTML your score, and I'm sure you could make this look way better as well. So this is just uh, quick, so that we can do our player score value and output it so the user can see it. And there's also a few other things. So basically you can kind of go through what you set up within the start game and set up the opposite to end the game. So this play game is going to false, so our game will stop playing. And then I also want to remove out all of the elements. And we also need to be able to account for when the game ends. And this one we can do when we're reducing the player lives. So this is the ideal spot because this is only part within the code where we're actually reducing the lives. So if the lives is less than zero, then what we wanna do is we wanna run game over. So the game over function. If it's less than zero, then it's game over. And then we're going to run the game over function. So first of all, let's try that. And then we're still going to uh, finish that off. But so the game should end and we should get our start menu back up if enough of them actually hit us. And so there we go. So we've got our start back up and ready to go and we can launch it again. The few things that we need to get rid of and notice that we've got a lot of bad guys. So we do got to basically clear all of those out on the game over and we can do this within the same way as we set up and as we loop through them. So temp enemy and document and using that query selector all. So the same one that we did before, we know that all of the elements have a class of body. So we can grab all of them within one array and then loop through them. So let and we'll just use enemy of, so to be consistent with what we did within the movement. And now it's just a matter of taking each one and navigating up to the parent node. So it's going up to the parent and then running the remove child and then removing out that enemy. So it's no longer going to exist. And then basically uh, it's, so it's going to, we're just basically removing them all off of the screen. Another one that we need to remove as well is temp shots. So get rid of all of those shots that we had earlier and query selector all. And those had a class of fire me, I believe. And then the same thing where we're going to loop through all of them. So I can copy this function and let's, uh, let's call it shot and temp shots. Yeah, I sometimes copy and paste, uh, so I don't have any spelling errors that way. And shot. So let's uh, try that again. And also, for the purposes of testing, let's reduce this a little bit. So reduce it to 50. So I think this should go a little bit quicker. And we've got our game over. So we're ready to start the game again. And again, game over. 
So great, everything looks to be working properly. And you can also hide this guy if you wanted to. I actually kind of like him there. Uh, and it gives us a little bit of something, type of animation of something happening. Uh, you could remove them if you wanted to, the same way that we did with the display value as block and then display as none. You could do that and remove it on end game and by default have it removed and then on start game you could show it. Uh, so that's up to you. You can add that in or you could uh, keep that the way that I have it. So go ahead and add that into your script. And then coming up next, we're going to make some updates to it and add in a little bit more color into the game by adding in making our bad guys so right now they're kind of bland they're all just black with that kind of gray background so we want to add in some color so that's coming up next